Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you. Let's get right on into it. All right, we knew this day was coming, and it was a matter of time before we uh, found out about the notice of allegations of the uh, violations by the Jeremy Pruitt uh, regime. They just came out with them, and uh, University of Tennessee just received a letter from the NCAA, so let's get into that. And here is uh, the Sports Illustrated uh, article all about it. It says, um, they slammed Tennessee with 18 infractions under the former coach, Jeremy Pruitt. He said he and his wife, Casey, paid recruits 12000 in cash and arranged fishing trips and nail salon visits as part of the allegations. It says former Tennessee football coach Jeremy Pruitt and several members of the football staff provided about 60000 in impermissible benefits and recruiting inducements to more than two dozen recruits and their families over three years. It says the 51-page document sent to the school outlines 18 separate allegations of blatant recruiting misconduct from Pruitt and his staff during his tenure. It says most serious allegations, Pruitt and his staff hosted at least six prospects and their families on nine weekend unofficial visits during the uh, year-long dead period. It said provided them with lodging, meals, transportation, even furniture, which totaled $12,000. It says Pruitt himself charged with having made cash payments of $3,000 and $6,000 to two prospects' mothers, the first used to assist in medical bills, and the other for a down payment on a vehicle. Dang, help somebody with medical bills, man. That's, I, I don't know what that should be. I know it's a violation, but crap. I'm, I, you know, this guy was making four or five million bucks. I don't know. That one, that's tough to call that. I don't know. And I'm not uh, defending Jeremy Pruitt by any stretch. <laughs> you can see in this video. It says, uh, Tennessee, of course, they fired Pruitt and did not pay him his $12.6 million buyout. It says, Pruitt and seven staff members are charged with having committed violations, all of whom were fired in January 2021 after an internal in university investigation uncovered the alleged wrongdoing. So the university uncovered it and uh, said the list included all these uh, coaches said even uh, Pruitt's wife was listed. She made cash payments of at least, according to this document, $13,000 to recruits and their families. She once worked in the NCAA rules compliance at Troy University or alma mater and Florida State. So I guess there's some hypocrisy there. It says as many as 12 UT athletes received improper benefits and therefore they were ineligible. Despite the 18 level one violations, the university was not hit with lack of institutional control. That's huge. That's really surprising. It says largely because of its transparency and integrity in promptly handling the wrongdoing. I'm really shocked they didn't hit them with the lack of institutional control. I guess what they're trying to say is if you handle it the way University of Tennessee did, we're not maybe going to come down as hard on you. It says the institution showed strong cooperation with NCAA investigators, conducted its own thorough investigation, and took immediate steps in dismissing the staff members and sanctioning it itself. The university docked itself 12 football scholarships last season, as well as imposing several more recruiting penalties, sources tell SI. And uh, Danny White, who is uh, now our athletic director, said says the university showed that they were proactively uh, working on this through transparent actions. So this moves us one step closer to a final resolution. Until we get to that point, I'm unable to discuss the case. So we understand the need to take responsibility for what occurred, but we remain committed to protecting our current and future student athletes. It says the NCAA's 18th month investigation wraps up in an interesting time within college sports, now that everybody's getting paid basically. So it's kind of, almost seems a little odd really. It says, Tennessee's investigation, cooperation, and response led White and his new staff should be the standard in such inquiries, NCAA documents say. White took over for retiring Philip Fulmer days after Pruitt and the staff were fired. One of his first actions was hiring Josh Heupel. And I wasn't that excited about it at first, but man, I couldn't be more pleased with Josh Heupel. And he wound up signing the 18th best class in the country, which was under tremendous duress. Says, now, this is important. Tennessee has 90 days to respond to the allegations and is not expected to contest the charges, given the fact that UT is the one that actually brought it to the NCAA. Given UT's own response, plus the NCAA's overhauled infraction process, 
the university is in a strong position to potentially evade the harshest sanctions. The NCAA is in the final stages of adopting an infractions policy overhaul with a penalty structure that focuses less on postseason bans. The intent is to avoid penalties that would affect players who were not at the school when the violations occurred, with sanctions focused more on, on those specifically at fault, such as coaches. So that really bodes well for the University of Tennessee. So it says they do not intend to penalize players who were not involved in any of this. So none of the kids over there were involved in this, I would think. It says, according to the NCAA's new penalty structure, Pruitt is at risk of having sanctions follow him to other jobs, which would be difficult if he tried to uh, get back in college sports. It says the NCAA holds him primarily responsible for the alleged violations, stating he did not demonstrate and promote an atmosphere of compliance and failed to properly monitor his staff. And I think this was Jeremy's response when he heard about the uh, allegations. Yeah, you can see he wasn't too happy about it. All right, so there's the notice of allegations, and that sort of uh, lays it out pretty clearly. And it sounds like uh, they're not going to come after the university too hard because they obviously cooperated fully and actually brought it to the NCAA. And the, given the fact that they have no intention of penalizing student athletes who had nothing to do with this, I'm, they may kind of be done with the uh, university, other than I'm sure there'll be some other crap. But um, it sounds like the big thing is going after the uh, people that made the mistakes. And it doesn't, I mean, 60,000 bucks is nothing today. You know, back then I guess it was, but uh, today that's crap, that's absolutely nothing. I mean, there's people making millions of dollars now uh, for one year. So much less uh, $60,000 for 12 players. So anyway, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. But I think this is the beginning of the end because uh, like say University of Tennessee has 90 days to respond and the NCAA has 60 days to respond to that. So it sounds like we're coming to the end of this and we can move on with our lives and our, and our sports, which is what we want. And I don't know about uh, Jeremy Pruitt if he's ever gonna get his money because uh, that's, that's a huge penalty. I mean, almost 12 million bucks that he won't be getting. And of course he's gonna be suing over that and I'm sure he's, and I believe he's already started that process. So, you know, you're not gonna walk away from 12 million bucks, but that's a heck of a penalty, that's for sure. So uh, that's what's going on with the uh, Vols and, of course, Jeremy Pruitt and the notice of allegations. But it sounds like the university could not have handled this better, and I think that's going to bode really well for the university long term. And if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. I've only been at this a few weeks, so I could use some subscribers. And I hope you did like the content. Well, nobody likes this type of content, but it is what it is. And uh, we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jay.